for today's craft, I'm going to be making a clear vinyl cell phone holder. And my inspiration for this, or why I thought of making it, is because I have this bag. So I'm a mom of two boys, right? And I have like my purse and then I have like my car bag. So this is my, my car bag or sport event bag where I have all kinds of stuff. So like I have my bag with just my essentials and I'm usually wearing workout clothes like six days out of the week. So I just have this and it has like, you know, wallet, keys. And then I also have all these other things like my wife's. Here's a smaller one with sunscreen. Um, some papers, glasses, you know, like all kinds of stuff. So when I throw my phone in, so I'm using my phone to record. So I just have my case, right? And this side you can see, this side when my phone is in and the screen is off, it's all black. So I throw it in here and then half the time I cannot find it. It goes to the bottom, it goes in all this stuff. And I just really hate black interior bags, but you know, I bought this one and it is what it is. So, and I have a lot of other black interior bags where I cannot find anything. It is the black hole. And I need this bag because I have like water bottles. I can carry like two to three water bottles. So I can just throw it in. This one is waterproof. So that's why I like this type and it's light. So it's not making everything else, you know, heavier. With... So yeah, I have this black hole of a bag and my phone gets lost in here and I've been leaving the house without my phone like more often I think because of this because I just can't see it. I think it's in there. It's not in there. So anyway, I was going to make this clear bag and I got the thought because I made this one and this one is so cute. I really like this. It's just a snappy bag and you just open it it's super easy. I have my sunscreen and hand sanitizer and then that way if it melts or spills it doesn't you know ruin everything um yeah so i thought oh maybe i'll make a bigger one throw my cell phone in it and connect this to the side that way at least i know it's in here and with this type of like closure it's really easy to get things in and out like you can just slide it in and then slide it out and yeah and the thing I don't like about other cell phone holders, it's all fabric, so you can't see inside. You know, like sometimes you just want to see like, oh, do I have a message? And you got to pull it out to look. But this one you can be like, oh, okay, no message. Leave it in there. Um, I didn't have any other lobster claws. So I have this one for, I just ordered for my next project, I just ordered like these heart carabiners, which I think would do way better. Like. I have this star one, so let's see. So just for, it would be like this. I'll show a picture later, but this is what I have for now. I guess that would work actually. Um, yeah, okay. And then I left this part longer so it can hang inside. Like, I don't know, it's kind of dorky if it's like outside. <laughs> to me but anyway inside right here where I can see it and I know it's there and I mean I guess it's water resistant too so that's good it's like those bags you know or those phone bags or cases where you wear to the beach and you have to wear it around your neck or something it's kind of like that but way easier each like one hand take it out and I'm actually making this one or the one that I'm going to show you guys wider because I have a iPhone 11 Pro Max, so it's a little bit bigger than the usual phone. Um, so I'll show you what to do so you can customize this for your own phone. So this one is like four inches across. Yeah, this phone is three inches, but it's really wide too. This case plus the, what is it called? The script thing. Anyways, that makes it fatter too. So now that is why I'm making this bag or this case um let me take this off and i'll show you what i'm going to be using 
so I'll leave all the dimensions in the description to help you out. Actually, let's go over how to make the pattern for your own phone. So I just have a piece of scrap paper, it's just rubbish. What you're gonna do is get your phone, not the phone case, but since I have the phone, you're going to measure your phone. So, I mean, visually this is easiest for me. I'm just gonna trace around it. And then I'm going to add three quarters of an inch to each side. So it's the right thing. So three quarters of an inch. Oh, and I just got this ro this rotary color cutter board, and it's so good. It's from Amazon called Honey's Haven. And I got it because it was pink and it was big. And it came with the cutter. Oh my gosh, this thing is so amazing. I'm like, where has this been my whole life? So just three quarters all the way around on both sides and half an inch on the top. So half an inch on the top. Honestly, it doesn't have to be exact. We're just going to do this for measurement. And then, so depending on your vinyl, if you have a long sheet of vinyl, like this. This one is 15 inches long by five. If you're gonna just fold it up like this, which is the easiest way, you don't have to add any seam allowance to the bottom. So that's how you get your measurement. And for me, mine's was five by seven, let's call it seven and a half. So 15. So I'm gonna cut a five by 15 inch piece of vinyl. And this is a thick vinyl. I get this from like the hardware store, like Home Depot or Walmart has it. It's also for table covers, you know, like and you put the clear vinyl over the table, like for picnics, I guess. I'm not sure, but it came like this. So this is the orange one. It comes in a huge roll and you have to get them to cut it for you. Uh, it's just a vinyl. And I've used, there's one that has this red printing on this. I like that one, that one's thick, but it's not as clear. So this orange one is nice and clear. I wish it had like some kind of gauge or something, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So it's just the orange one. Okay, so you just write that down. So you're gonna have a piece of vinyl. Five by 15. So for my fabric, this is not very organized, but you're going to do uh, two pieces of a three and a half high by whatever your width is for this right here. So for me, it's five for the width, two pieces of that. And then you're gonna need one piece of a three inch by three inch square. And then for your handle, one piece of, I did a five and a half by two inch piece. This can totally be, this is for like a piece this size. But if you're gonna just do a small one, like a small diving or something, you definitely can cut it down. I also only had this one inch lobster claw, so that's why I made it wider. But you can definitely make it smaller. You can actually use ribbon, whatever you want. So this is like 
totally up to you, this one. Okay, and then so you also need some tape measure. So to get that snappiness for the bag, this is from tape measure. And it's like in there, you know, like those slap bracelets, it's the exact same thing. But this one is nice and like thin. I think it's like three quarters of an inch wide. Whereas the snap slap braces, you can't use that. Because, well, you can, I guess, but it's wider, right? It's like about an inch or inch and a half. So I just had this old tape measure. I cut it. And then, so you want it to be at least half an inch shorter than your width. Like this is the magic number right here. Five. So you would need a piece that is four and a half inches or less. I like to go a little bit less because you don't want to sew over this. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of space. So tape measure. Four, four and a quarter inch. Two pieces. I will leave this all in the description. <laughs> Sorry, it's so messy. Okay, so I already measured that off. I have, I marked it off with a Sharpie. So you're gonna just cut it. Okay, make sure it's locked because if it's, if this goes in, you're gonna lose it. You're gonna have to take the whole thing apart. I put a clip, I don't know. I don't know if it would work if it went in, but it's stuck. So I can put that on the side for a different project later. And then what you're gonna do is round the corners. I couldn't hide what I've been keeping inside. So I tried to deny it again until I feel Make sure you throw these away, they're kind of sharp. And if you want to be even more precautious, like say your material is really thin, I have this white electrical tape. Just some kind of like thick tape and something that won't show through. So you can just put a piece at the end. You don't want it to stick out too much, but, and it's okay if it, is like this, that's fine. Electrical tape works the best, I think, because it's thick and durable. And like scotch tape, it'll just poke through anyways. And this will just make your bag or your little pouch last a little bit longer. So when I made this one, this is my very first one, so it's kind of like ugly, but I didn't do this part. I did round it, but I didn't do this part and I didn't use interfacing and I can see, you know, just with time it's rubbing off over here. And so it'll cut through here. I mean, eventually, not anytime soon. Okay. So I have these two pieces checked off. Okay. So I have my three by three piece of fabric and the rest of these I have interfacing to go with it. The interfacing I use is just this medium weight fusible interfacing. Just make sure it's use fusible. And I bought this at Walmart. So we're going to turn on my little, I have my Easy Press Mini here. I'm gonna turn that on. So this piece is for the handle, the skinnier one, the five and a half by two. And then this piece is the three and a half by five. While that's warming up, I'll talk about this. This is fray check and I don't know what it is. It's like, it's not glue, but it keeps the edges from fraying. And also having um, interfacing will do that too. So I'll show you how I use this later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start 
using the interface on my material. Always make sure that the, the rough gluey side is facing your material when you do this. It's like I know this, but I've like done it and got it stuck on the ironing board before too. You don't have to do the interfacing, but it makes it last a lot longer and it's just easier to work with. Also, I want to mention some fabrics don't have a right way and a wrong way, but if yours does, just make sure you have it facing the right way. Like this Mickey Mouse one didn't have a right way, so it's pretty easy. This one though, I wanted the top to be like this. And I'm just going to iron that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is, let's do the handle first. I'm going to fold this in half and iron it. And then I'm going to fold this up about a quarter of an inch. Maybe something is different in the Can't wait enough. And then fold it back in half. I like to just clip it so it stays together. And then I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing for these two pieces also. Fold it in half. And then fold it. This one is all the way to the middle. Or just, you know, shy of the middle. You really want the seams to be even, so you don't have a problem when you're sewing it. Okay, and then for the little square, you're going to fold it in a triangle. And then one more time. And if you have a pattern that you like, you might want to play around with it a little. Like, what would I want showing? And it's going to be facing towards the middle. We'll make a little triangle. This way it's more colorful. Okay. Okay, so now we have our piece of vinyl. Let me turn this off. So we're going to fold it in half. So we're going to take one of our pieces and you have to decide which way is the right way for you. So I guess it's this way. And this is actually the back. I don't know. I, I like the tab part in the back because when I had my phone in here, this part was covering it. So I think I would rather have it this way. Yeah. So this is the back. I'm gonna just stick this part, this triangle in here and maybe like a quarter of an inch in there. And I'm just eyeballing it to the center. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you to the sewing machine and we're just gonna sew as close as we can to the edge, about a one eighth of an inch. You can see right along here and here and we're also going to top stitch this so I'm one eighth of an inch here and here okay and the stitch length i'm putting it at four something large because you don't want to um, damage the vinyl too much as close as you can to the edge I'm using white thread. Okay, and then we're just gonna top stitch the open side and then the closed side. Another end of the night, here I am by your side again. Okay, and 
so I'm gonna fold this in like this. I try to look which side looks better. This side has a little bit of like the bottom showing, so I'm gonna fold it inwards. Like that. And I last time I did it, this is like when you would put the lobster clasp. So yeah, if you had it, you would put it in now. We're gonna take the bag and do right sides together. So the tab's on the inside. And then you have to think, when you turn it inside out, which side do you want the tab to be on? So like I said, I wanted the tab to be on the back side, right? So we're gonna, so when you take it inside out, you want the tab to be on this side. It's really just a personal preference. So just make it nice and neat. And put the tab on the inside and the little handle. I'm just gonna clip it. This is gonna be really fat too. So we're gonna be very careful when we sew it. I like to clip it on this side also. Although we're not going to sew this side yet. We're only going to do the side with the tab. And then we're going to put one at the bottom and one on the side. So we're going to just do a quarter inch inseam right down here. So yeah, it's going to be very thick, so just take it slow back stitch here and reinforce it down here. Okay, so now we're going to take our two tape measure pieces. See, that's nicely in there. And we're going to insert them in with the numbers facing us. And you know, I don't know which which way is better if you put it because you know how the vinyls on the inside. You can put it where the edges of it is like on the outside, or I like to put it so that the edges of the plastic are actually facing the vinyl. So it's like a fabric piece, vinyl, fabric piece. I'm putting the in with the numbers facing me, fabric piece, and then vinyl. And then you have to push it all the way in. If you need like a tool or something to do that, um, like a pencil or something, that would help. Okay, and the same thing, you're gonna turn it over, the numbers facing outwards, and I'm gonna be putting it between the fabric and the vinyl so that this rough edge is facing the vinyl. Once you get in in there, it's kind of hard to get out. So make sure you do it the right way. You don't want to sew over it. So it's important that it's all the way in there. Okay, and then once it's in, we're just gonna sew a quarter inch inseam all the way down. So pin it or clip it, making sure that it's nice and flush. I've been pinning it on the top just because it's a little bit easier. And then I already have a pin at the bottom and I'll put one. I keep calling them pins, but they're not pins. Clips. Okay, so now that it's all sewn, we're going to just trim. So take your fabric scissors or any heavy duty scissors. And we're gonna trim, it's already a quarter inch, but I'm just gonna make it a little neater. You don't wanna go too close to the stitching. Um, a little shy of a quarter inch. And so that the vinyl pieces are nice and neat. And then when you get to the top, just trim that also. on the other side and so there's this thing called fray check 
And what we're gonna do is just apply some on the nice cut edge so that it doesn't fray. I just bought this off of Amazon. Okay, so make sure it's neat. I don't want any threads hanging out. And you just simply dab it on. Make sure to get the inside too. If you have pinking shears, that would help the fraying also if you don't want to buy this free check. Okay, and then it says to leave it to dry for 30 minutes. I think I'll just take 5 minutes and then do it just so I can finish up this video. I also like to kind of snip this edge. Coming up on the hardest part, turning this thing right side out. So I'm gonna let it, this dry for five minutes and come back. Okay, so now we're gonna turn it right side out. And I swear this is the hardest part of this whole project. It helps a little if you fold the edges, like the seam in on one edge and you push it in. I'm gonna fast forward through my struggle, but yeah. At least my hands in here. So once you start it, like the ball of vinyl, just push it through. And this is why I can't keep my manicures very long. <laughs> I've heard you can warm up the vinyl and it's easier, but I don't know how that doesn't stretch it out. So I haven't tried it yet. So once you get most of it in, you can start to turn over your top. Just be gentle with it. I'm more concerned about the seams versus the tape measure. Don't worry, it'll bounce right back. So just push the corners out as good as you can. If you have one of those corner turners, that would really help. Okay, so there you go. It's all done. You can just warm it up in your hands and flatten it out. And so now you have your snappy bag. So if this was your cell phone, you just slide it in here and go. I thought I put the tab on the other side, but I didn't. But anyways. Ideally, I wanted it to be like this, but this kind of makes sense on the right-hand side if you're right-handed, but yeah, I guess you can turn it either way. But yeah, I hope you guys like this project. Um, if you guys make one, please let me know in the comments, and I'll take a picture of it later when I have the cute heart carabiner, and I'll probably post it on my Instagram. I do have an Instagram on uh, angiescraft.com or on Instagram. But yeah, it would pretty much look like this, but with a silver heart in my body. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video.